Hi, this is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on Working with Audio in Final Cut Pro 10. By the way, we have a new subscription service where all our online video tutorials and webinars are now available via subscription. This is a fast and low-cost way to access all our online training. This includes all our Final Cut 10 and Adobe training, plus our webinars and tutorials. For one low monthly fee, you get streaming access anywhere, anytime via the Internet. Plus, subscribers can attend any live webinar for free. To learn more, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. So let me show you how to adjust audio levels and read audio meters, add and modify fades and transitions to audio clips, show you how to detach audio from video, limit the number of audio channels that are playable in a clip, and fix common audio problems like soft volume and hum. I'll show you how to sync double system sound such as we use with DSLR video, and then I'll add, modify, and remove audio filters. I want to thank John Putch for sharing his footage from his movie Route 32 with us for the next couple of examples. It helps to explain what this whole audio process is about. I've got a simple sequence here. She ain't got the right to treat anybody like that. How come you never told me what happened? And notice that as I'm playing it back, the audio meters in the very center are showing me the approximate levels. I will. The problem is they're very small, they're very hard to read. To fix that, simply click once and it opens up the audio meters on the right-hand side of the timeline. Except these, although they're nice and tall, they're kind of thin and hard to see. I'm going to grab this vertical slider and open them up and make them, well, we could make them really wide if we want to. I think that's a little excessive, so let's put it back to right about there. Now, when we play our audio... Well, good ready. I'm able to see both the left and right channels with measurement, which indicates how loud my audio is going to be, and that's the zero level that we don't want our audio to go above. The reason there's a little bit of headroom here is if it does go over zero, it tells us how far over zero it's getting. And see these two things up here? That shows the maximum my audio level has been during the latest playback. For instance, here. I will. Well, I'm good and ready. The loudest it occurred during that short playback was negative 16 dB. These are displaying a stereo mix, but Final Cut also does surround. The way we change it is to go back to the project library, select the project, go up to File, Project Properties, and you see with the timeline selected, see this wrench here. When you click the wrench, it opens up the project properties. And we can change between doing a surround mix and doing a stereo mix from this pop-up menu. You can change at any point. They can have clips or no clips. You can be almost done or just starting. So making a change doesn't affect your edit. It just changes how your mix is determined. Most of the work that I do, in fact, all the work that I do is stereo. So I make sure that audio channels is set to stereo. Let's go back to our project. To increase or decrease a level, go to here. Treat anybody like Notice his level's around negative 20. I like to have talking head audio playback between negative 6 and negative 12. So I'm going to grab the audio and drag this up. Drag this black line up. I've got an extra large cursor to make it easier to see. I just have to get it positioned properly. Drag this up, and I can increase or decrease the volume by grabbing this black line and dragging it up and down. I'll take it up to plus 12. And now when I play it... Ain't got the right to treat anybody like that. See, it's jumping almost to zero. It's a little bit too hot. By the way, there's a preference setting that can help us figure out what our audio looks like. Notice how soft it is here. It's kind of hard to see the shape of the audio. If you go up to Final Cut Pro, go down to Preferences, and turn on, under the Editing tab, turn on Show Reference Waveforms. What it will do is Final Cut will create some grayed back images that make your audio look like it was running at exactly 100%. This has zero impact on playback. It's simply a display function, but it allows you to see what the shape of the audio, what the waveforms look like, if your audio was at full volume. 
many times we want to do an edit where the audio is soft, and we're not exactly sure if it's soft or we just have a, a mumbled word here, in which case doing the edit would be bad. So the reference waveforms, after a while, it takes a little bit of time to, to create them, but if you see grade back waveforms, which are taller than the darker waveforms, that's the reference waveforms. They're there just to help you see what the shape of your audio looks like. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz store.